Let me guess, when you get into a new API, to understand what is happening when you get a new request, you set a breakpoint and you go with a step into to understand what it goes through. Am I right? I used to do that a lot, but nowadays I have been using Cursor to do something different, faster and better. Let me show you. This is one project that I grabbed from GitHub. I'm not familiar with it. But for example, I know that I have here an API for to-do items, and I know that inside of the to-dos there's this to-do api.cs. There I can see that I have an endpoint for posts. So what I used to do is that I would come here, set a breakpoint, try to drill down through the code and understand what is happening. But sometimes I would miss things like middlewares. That's why debugging was so useful. But let me show you a different way to do it, to take advantage of AI, to quickly do that and understand what is happening. So I'm using Cursor AI and I will open a new chat. And what I will do is that I will ask for please, and I always say please to AI because this is the way that I was educated. So please generate a flowchart using mermaid.js. By the way, mermaid.js is a great tool that I have a video on it. I will link it on the top where I show you how to use mermaid to build diagrams with code. So please generate a flowchart using mermaid.js that shows what is happening when there's a new post request to create a to-do item. Show me everything from the entry point of my API until the database. Make sure you consider any middlewares or filters in the ASP.NET pipeline. Ask him to generate and notice that now he's generating this flowchart TV that is one type of biogram using Markdown that is built with Mermaid.js. And also is describing every single thing that he, he found based on our uh, question. So that means that now I can easily or either read the thing that is here or I can copy this thing from Mermaid. And if I go to the Mermaid.js live editor that you can find on the website, that I can paste the code that was generated on cursor and now notice how beautiful it is. So if we go here, we can see that, let me zoom in, when the client posts a request to the to-dos, goes through the ASP.NET Core pipeline, gets into the middlewares, authentication, unauthorized or authorized. If it's authorized, goes through a rate limiting filter something I was not aware that was there and we'll look for it to make sure that it's there. Then if it's within the limits, it's either it goes through a validation, it either fails, valid model, so we get into the post handler, create a to-do entity, add a to-do to the DB context, save changes in sync, return 201 created with the to-do item and location. Let's check if that is true. So, rate limiting, it's on the programs, yes. Okay, we have the rate limiting in place, makes sense. To do API on the post, does this require authorization? Let's check, this is using minimal APIs with a group in the roots, so require authorization, makes sense. Then what is happening? Creates a to do, adds to the DB context, save changes, returns a created with a location. It's exactly that. And what I like about this is that I can quickly understand the navigation of the code, the flow of the code, without needing to go through every single thing, trying to go by hand to check. Okay, this is what's happening when I have this if statement, it goes through here, otherwise it goes through there. This is extremely useful to quickly understand the source code. Even if I take the risk that the AI is missing something or describing something slightly different, Often, in this first contact with the source code, I don't need to understand completely all the details. I just want to have a glance overview over what is happening. So it's great. So I've been doing this and it's saving me a lot of time. But let's see if this works in another case. We also have here this to-do web application that if we take a look, it looks like, yes, it's Razor Pages, I think. So let's try something. Let's ask something different. Can you now generate 
the flowchart starting from the web application at and I will provide the path to the web application until the database. Please, for the scenario where I'm adding a new to do, please do it at an I level. Components only. Let's try. Okay, here it goes. Flowchart looks like you found out the API in the database. Let's see what is here so we copy this let's go into mermaid once again i will open a new live editor and here it is so he understands the to do web he says the web client browser is using the client components then there's a post to the api endpoints can reply it 201 created to do api post handler calls the entity framework db context save changes it to a sql database is it sql i didn't check that and it returns let's check if it's sql since it looks like this thing is using aspire let's check what is here on the program cs okay so it's using sqlite so we can say it's true it's a sql database and let's just confirm that in fact the to do web calls the api directly so if we go to the client to the components and that's why he calls it client components, or it's great. Uh, on to do list razor, we have this have to do that calls this to do client dot add async. If we drill down, it uses an API client to call the to dos. The client is registered here to use the base address. So let me go into Aspire again, close this Aspire program. And the web project only has access to this to do API. So it's that. What do you say? Useful? Please let me know in the comments. And in the meanwhile, you might want to watch this video right here, where I show you what cursor is about and the types of things that you can do with it.